just a little bit. Squish egg out front, nice and stinky. And that's pretty much it. Not a, not a whole lot of magic to the trap setting. If you look at a, a habitat map or a vegetation map, it may seem like there's a lot until you realize that a lot of those little parcels are, are in fragments that are too small to actually support even a pair of foxes. So uh, they need roughly about 1,200 acres in a block for a single pair. And ideally you need probably about five to 10,000 acres to support even a small population of, you know, four, five, six family groups. All right. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> well, first we took a weight and then we checked the sex. And then we took a hair sample, which we'll use for kind of backup uh, genetic analysis. We're going to take a ear tissue sample. That'll be the primary genetic sample. So now we're putting on our fancy new GPS collars. Kind of the key with these guys, kind of just keep their eyes covered and they'll, they'll stay a lot calmer. So we will be able to track the animals and figure out how large their home ranges are, what sort of, you know, to the extent that there are different habitat types out here, which this is pretty hom homogeneous, um, what habitats they'll be using, and then also den locations. That's kind of the important stuff. And they'll also tell us if the animal were to die, it will kick into a special signal. Basically, the, the, the pulse rate will double. And then we'll know that something's wrong. That, that happens if the animal doesn't move for eight hours. Okay, so now's the, the time you really want to make sure you have a, a firm grip because when their eyes are exposed, you know, he's staying fairly calm because he's in the bag, got his eyes covered. But we're going to uncover his eyes, take a look. Uh, we're going to use a, a stick to take a look at his teeth, make sure there's nothing broken or no damage in there. If he was really, really, really severely injured or something, we would take him into a vet for some care. He's got some bumps on his nose here. I'm guessing that's probably from fighting the trap. Okay. Yeah. Looks like he probably had an active night in there. Yeah, he's more than happy to chew the stick. Now you kind of move that toward the back. Okay, he's missing the two lower premolars on the left, bottom left. Um, it looks like old. old the number, number ones, number two, two. Yeah. one and two. Can you tell age by this? Just that he's an, an adult. He's, he's definitely not a young of the year or yearling. He does have a, a worn canine. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a broken canine on the upper left. That, that looks oldish, actually. Yeah, so two lower left. Lower? It's, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the upper left canine. Okay. Yeah, and then it's the two lower left premolars, one and two. Are they all new? Or old? Old. Yeah. Yeah. Old. Breaks. old. Otherwise, he's got um, light to moderate wear. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, it does. Okay. looks pretty nice. The whole purpose of this project is that with kit foxes, um, you know, there are three, three core populations, the Carrizo Plain, Western Kern County, and uh, the Pinocchi Valley area. And then there are a number of, and actually a relatively small number of these smaller satellite populations, um, and, and this is one of them. And so what we'd like to do, no work has been done in the satellite populations for the most part, a uh, fair amount of work in the core population. So. 
Um, what we're trying to do here is just get some basic demographic and ecological information on a satellite population, just to see is it you know radically different from a core population. We expect there might be a little bit more turnover in these smaller populations, um, uh, but we're not sure. You know, are the home range sizes comparable? I suspect the food habits are, are comparable. You know, they're they're probably primarily eating kangaroo rats here, but that's what we've determined from the scat analysis. And then we'll also look at survival rates, reproductive rates. Um, movement patterns you know, in terms of um, den use patterns and, um, and home range size and then, yeah, the food habits. So and that's kind of what we're looking at with this project. Well, good. Somebody here is good luck. I'm not sure who, but yeah. <laughs> compared to last week. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>